So hello YouTube, this is Vibhash here back with another video and this time we will be discussing or we will be rather bench testing PC components. Uh, so if you have ordered new components and you, you are in a dilemma whether you have received a dead on arrival bad or broken component, uh, this video is going to help you or this video is going to show you as to how you can test or how you can make sure that you do not have a DOA uh, part or a DOA PC component component now before we move forward with it let me tell you that the least that you would require would be the motherboard without the motherboard you cannot test which component is working or which component is, component is not working motherboard is one of the most important components or most important things that you require to test whether all the other components are working fine or not and please make sure that you stick to the end of the video because this video has got a lot of information in it it might help you or someone else who is in need this uh, video might help you in a way to build your own pc or to build your first pc without further ado let us jump right in So the first thing that you need to make sure is that you do not pass any static electricity onto your components or onto your PC components. For that, you have to make sure that you plug in your power supply. And before touching any component or before touching a motherboard specifically, you need to just rub your hand on the power supply so that you dissipate all the static electricity that you have uh, collected. Let me plug in the power supply and we will begin. And before we plug in the power supply, uh, there are three cables that we need one is the 24 pin motherboard cable that will come with the PSU this is the first cable that you will need now this is for bench test we are not you know assembling the PC right now we are just performing a bench test for the bench test you need or you require the motherboard cable you require the 10 pin CPU cable and the PCI Express cable you will require the motherboard cable to provide electricity to the motherboard you will require the cpu cable to provide it to the cpu the electricity to the cpu i mean and to the graphics card to check whether you have a display or not so these three things are necessary unbox your motherboard you can use the box as the anti-static base so we will place the motherboard onto the box now let me plug in the power supply before i go ahead and touch the motherboard okay i've just plugged in the power supply let me turn it on right now, turn it on and I've rubbed my hand so that I can dissipate all the static electricity from my body into the power supply. We are safe to touch the motherboard you can say. The motherboard is out of the box now. For the bench test the first thing that we need is the CPU. So we will plug in the CPU or we'll, we will uh, put the CPU into the CPU socket. There is a triangle a golden triangle over here on the CPU you have to make sure that you match that triangle to the triangle that is present on the motherboard if you can see there's a teeny tiny triangle over here you need to match this and you need to match this this golden triangle that is available or that is present here this will go this way in all right so that is in right now and just give it a little wiggle so that you know it is uh, plugged in properly and then close the socket so that is how you install the CPU onto your motherboard after you have plugged the CPU in the first thing that you need to make sure is you install the CPU cooler you can install the stock cooler uh, if your CPU comes with a stock cooler that is or you can uh, install the cooler that you have per uh, bought for the CPU specifically. So I'm going to install the stock cooler because it is, it is much less hassle than the Galahad. The reason why I'm installing this stock cooler is this is for bench test purpose. That is the reason why I'm installing the stock cooler. Or if it were to assemble the PC into the cabinet, I would have directly installed the Galahad, the 360 Galahad. So let us move forward with it. Now you can see over here there are four screws that will align on the four screws that are present on the motherboard one two three and four but this socket you have to remove this socket you have to make sure that you remove remove this socket because as you can see it does not go or it does not pair 
so you have to remove this socket for this to sit or seat properly onto the processor now the reason why you need to install the cooler is that without the cooler even in the bios you will get an error message that cpu overheating we will remove this socket first all right now that is removed we will go ahead and install the cpu cooler make sure that it is aligned properly before you go ahead and tighten the screws Okay, we got one side down. We need three more. If you're not able to install it, you can go ahead and use your other hand to push the bracket uh, upward and then tighten the screw. All right, I think we got that one in place. Now it's time for the other one. Just make sure that you do not tighten it completely as this is just for testing. All right, the cooler is installed now. You need to connect this uh, fan cable over here. You can connect it to any header for that matter. But for now, I just found it handy. Now that the processor is installed, we will go ahead and install the RAM. All right, just a gentle reminder. Make sure that you always rub your hand after some activity to dissipate the static electricity. Okay. So here goes nothing all right there goes ram number one now it's time for the other one make sure that you align the socket properly first and then push it in all right so now we have installed the ram uh, let us move forward with installing the display or the vga or the graphic card now this is important to get a display without this you will not get a display so we'll install this make sure you align the pins properly and push it in the graphic card seems to be installed we will plug in the motherboard pin you got the 24 uh, pin or 24 pin socket over here on the motherboard this will go like that you got the click right so that means you have installed it properly. Now for the other pin, now you can see there's one motherboard, two motherboard. So these two pins, the bigger ones will go here and the smaller one will go here. One and two. So now that is plugged in. Let us connect the CPU cable. Now remember this cable will power the CPU up. So you need to uh, plug this in. That one goes there and here. Now that everything is plugged in, we will try powering the system on and see if it goes to BIOS. And also make sure that you have a monitor handy and a keyboard as well. And make sure that you have got the HDMI cable attached onto the monitor and connect it to the GPU. All right, it is connected now. Okay, time to power on the PSU. As you can see, there is a red light, which means there we have power. Now I'm going to jump start this one with the help of a screwdriver. I will not take responsibility whatsoever if you damage any parts while you know following this video. This is in particular with this particular motherboard and this particular configuration that I am doing. So please consult someone or please make sure that you have uh, everything in place before you go ahead with this. Now, uh, one thing I forgot is I forgot to po give power to the uh, VGA or give power to the graphics card. So let me plug that in. This particular uh, deep cool DQ570 is a fully modular power supply. That is the reason why you have to plug in on both ends. Uh, it is not like your traditional or conventional power supplies. So the GPU is now lit white which means that it has power now. Now that we have fixed everything in place, we will try to power this on. And voila, we have power. Let us see if we get the display. Let me power the monitor on and see if we have display. All 
So as you could see, there were RGB lights blinking both on the motherboard and on the RAM as well, which indicates that the motherboard was working fine and also was the RAM. However, this is the case with components which have RGB on them. If they do not have RGB, uh, they are the indicator lights which would say that whether they have power or not. And if all of that does not work or if you're not able to figure it out with all of those uh, indicators, you have to have the display. In the end, as you saw that, you know, there was display on the monitor which shows that the graphic card was also working fine. And where, so were uh, the other components, the processor, the motherboard, the RAM and the graphics card. Now, I also tried this test without the processor and I could see RGB lights on the motherboard and on the RAM which indicated that the motherboard and RAM were fine after I plugged in the processor uh, and uh, plugged in the display it shows or it showed me that you have the 5600x processor installed onto your motherboard which indicates that even the processor and the graphic cards were working fine so I hope you found this video helpful and I hope that this is going to help you or anyone you know in the future if you do find it helpful or if you did find it helpful please do like comment share and subscribe uh, I request the uh, traffic or I request the people who are uh, watching my videos please do subscribe to my channel because I see that 95% of the traffic that is coming on my channel has not subscribed to it so I would request you to please go ahead and subscribe for more content if you do subscribe uh, it gives me an enthusiasm it gives me a, a drive to make better videos and uh, come up with better content I hope you all will subscribe and as always stay home stay safe stay blessed happy riding and see you in the next video ciao